All right, hey, welcome everybody to Harvest Gleanings. It's another episode of Harvest Gleanings. Um, we are coming together every single week now to rehash the message from the previous Sunday. So we wanna just invite you as we, um, as we sit down and talk about it, you'll notice um, Talon over here to my right. Um, every week we're gonna try and invite different guests in because we just wanna hear what they've gleaned from the message, right? So we, we come and we hear the teaching and preaching of the word of God and God does things and shows us and reveals some things in a, to us through the word of God. And we just wanna come and rehash it and glean. What, what did God show you in the message? And so Mason, why don't you pray for us? And uh, we'll jump sure. in. Lord Jesus, we come before you uh, this evening. God, I, I just thank you for the opportunity to, to be together, Lord, with uh, these two dear uh, brothers and sisters. God, I'm excited to just talk about what you showed us, Lord, and I pray that you would reveal uh, new truths to all of us and God that we could see uh, so, you know through different people's perspectives what you're showing us through your word on Sundays Lord and I uh, pray that you would just be with our time and it's in your name we pray amen all right so we've titled the book um, getting renewed vision at time of transition and that's what we were two weeks ago kind of did an overview of the book and then this Sunday we jumped really into chapter one Kind of almost did an overview of chapter one, really focusing on the first half and just titled the message, um, Seven Lessons We Must Learn in the Wilderness. And just what kind of walked into this rather quickly, I felt. I wish, I mean, I almost could have done a message on each one of those points, but that wasn't the scope. And so what are some things that just jumped off, um, off the off the pages of God's word or, you know, let's just, let's, what'd you glean? Let me just rephrase it that way. What'd you get? Okay, you want to start Go us ahead. off? Sure. Um, so I would say the first thing was the second lesson um, that God will lead you to face your fears in faith. Mm. Um, and so then I was just like reminded of like fears that I personally have and um, of just like one of them was like being alone. And so whenever I went to Emporia, and lived there and had like nobody mm -hmm. um it was like okay god what do you want me like to learn through this and i think that was when i grew the most in the lord was like being alone like and just trusting that god's gonna you know provide and that he was my best friend and yeah. you know like in that time and i had to really like lean on him um for everything and every aspect and so that whenever you're preaching yesterday that was just what like kept popping up into my mind was like, okay, God, like, yeah, there's a reason why, you know, we go through the wilderness and yeah. um, face up here. Okay, so that's good. Um, just real quick, Karen and I were sitting on the deck last night talking about that and, you know, just as parents and my daughter's now technically an adult and, you know, brings all kinds of fears to the forefront. Just like, oh, wow. It's a different season transition just from a home, you know, and, and just having to face our fears through faith. And we just had a sweet talk about that last night. Yeah. Good. Well, that leads in, you know, to the next point about how um, God will use the wilderness to develop leaders. Mm. You know, like God uses those situations where you have to face your fear. You have to do something that, you know, takes you out of your comfort zone and, and puts you in a position where, you can either have faith or, or you can freak out. Yeah. And when you choose to have faith, he's, he's developing you for the future. Um, right. Like we're life is just a constant journey of God puts you in a position. You're, you got to choose to have faith and walk in faith. And if you do, he's developing you for the next phase. I mean, like when you said that my entire life, it just reminds me of facing fears, and insecurities and just watching the, what the Lord was doing in those times and where he's brought me today uh, was without a doubt you know he was using that to develop me as a believer and as a you know as a son yeah. like I just am super thankful for that because I always think of a lot of times we like humans we just love the easy road we love it to just be given to us I mean it was really awesome getting a, a check for being an American. Like yeah. this 
not too long ago, right? But like, what do we usually? What happens when we get money given to us? We just we blow it, right? But the money that we work hard for, we man, we take, we budget, we you know, we take care of it. At least I, you know, that's for me a principle. That's always, it's the things that I worked for that I that I've you know, in, labored over or endured some hardness that were the most valuable lessons that I learned and, and the most valuable seasons in my life. So like when you go through a hard time, that's always usually when like, man, you're the most appreciative of like the Lord and your faith and, and things like that. And when things are just given to us, we don't tend to appreciate it. And it, it tends to be just kind of like create this sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord, I love how he teaches us lessons through allowing us to go through a hard time through the wilderness and it's going to be essential right i mean like i think of being a parent now mm. if i didn't go through some of the situations i went to went through as a young man uh, and i i would i would be a lousy husband right. and dad um and a lousy youth pastor um if it weren't for this you know so I, like i love you hearing what you're talking about it's like just made me think god is preparing you for for a season you know mm. and i love that god uses that like because it wasn't hard. I mean, like it was difficult, but you got through it, mm -hmm. right? So he's never gonna put something in front of you that you can't handle. And that's mm -hmm. what's cool about the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have anything to add to that? Not on that page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, you both mentioned, you know, going through the wilderness. And that, I think that's the key point here, as God leads them through, and we're talking about the nation of Israel, and the first time they go all the way through it rather quickly, and then they get to see the promises and the promised land that God had for them, and they said no. In their mind, they get to dwell on the wrong side of Jordan, just close to God's promises, and having just come through a time where they get to trust and rely and, and see God provide for their needs. And as a pastor, that frustrates me because <laughs> there's so many believers that live right there. Mm -hmm. They've been through some things and they've seen God do victories and, and you know, they've murmured, maybe murmured along the way and God brought them all the way through for them just to say, you know what, that's far enough. I don't, I don't want anymore. And the very last verse of the, of the chapter says that they abode many days in Kadesh, um, which is their sanctuary in the wilderness, you know, their, their comfortable spot, their happy place, the place they long for. And, uh, and it just grieves my heart <clears throat> because the reason God brings us through the wilderness isn't to settle, but it's to move forward. Um, I don't know. That just it's to walk in the fullness of what He of what He wants for us, what it, He desires for us. It is. And you think about the two tribes. Just so you read about them in in, in Numbers. Uh, what is it? Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, mm -hmm. where they say, "Okay, we're, we want our inheritance on this side." Well, God's that's just fine. That's what you want. That's what you get. And so they settle. But before he says that, this is what you get. He says, no, you're going to cross the river and you're going to go through the whole land of promise and you're going to help him get victory. And then you're going to go back. I'm like, man, I don't want any of that. If I'm going to go in the promised land, just give me that. So he said, no, you're going to go see it firsthand and then you're going to reject it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I mean, that's exactly what happened the first time. Then they go back in the wilderness for all this time. And then we find ourselves in Deuteronomy. It's a whole new generation, so it's the same place, the same, uh, the same vision, but different people. And that's my prayer for HBC. Mm. That's my prayer for both of you. Um, is that okay? Same, same place, same town, right? Same vision. Um, but now let's walk in the land of promises. Let's 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 be a new people. You know, transformed people. I love that point that David made in the last harvest cleanings. I thought, man, that's that was amazing. It was really good. So I stole it and <laughs> used it. Um, but the idea is that God leads you to the wilderness to go through it, not live in it, not abide in it. Do um, you have anything to add to that? I just can't imagine abiding. No. Go through it and just trust in the Lord. It's just a good lesson. I feel like the last couple of years have just been an entire lesson of trusting in the Lord and not in myself. 
abiding in it would be trusting in yourself. Yeah. Just choosing not to trust the Lord. Um, which doesn't make much sense. No. Yeah, that's like a lot of believers, they're content with the idea. And you, you know, like this is what I thought of like salvation when I was a younger, you know, growing up was that salvation is getting to heaven. Mm-hmm. Like that's the, that's the icing on the cake. You know, like that's the pinnacle of being a Christian is we get to go to heaven, you know? And, and that's, I mean, I guess it is kind of the icing on the cake, but that's not, but like the cake is, is what like, man, that's where the substance is. It's God has called us to a life of, you know, of, of providence, a life of joy, peace, right? A life that is full of life, right? That we can live today and we can walk in the fullness of what he's called us to. That's the promised land for a believer is to be able to walk in, you know, truth and, and to not be content with just getting to heaven. Mm. I mean, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm just as excited as the next guy that, uh, that I've been set free from the bondage of hell and death right but man that's like that's not the point that's not the only reason that god came you know and and so but a lot of times that's where you know believers will land on is they're content with just walking in in the truth that i'm getting i'm going to heaven they don't want to and it's and it's a frightening thing to live in faith because you know what god can do he might just move you across the country he might just move you across the world, and that's a that's a crazy thing. Who I mean, like you have to walk in faith to, to be there. And so, right. a lot of people they just get content with, ah, one day I'll get to heaven. I love God. I love Jesus. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to do my thing, and and praise the Lord for that. But but that's not what God wants. Like that's not the pinnacle of what God, like God has called us to a, a purpose and a mission, right? And when we live that out, that's where we find fulfillment and joy in in this life. I mean, if you look around, there's like we're living in a world that's not very fulfilling and in a world that's not full of joy. Spe- specifically in the time that we're in right now, it's I mean, it's chaos. Mm-hmm. But we can but when we're living out our purpose and in the mission that he's given us, we we can still have joy and peace and and, and walk in like, you know what I mean? It's like I feel like a, that's where a lot of people land is they might even see their brothers and sisters walking, you know, thriving in the land, yeah. but they, but it, it freaks them out yeah. because God might call me to do something that I don't want to do. Right. I don't want to be held accountable for that. And, you know, let me tell you, like just personal testimony, I didn't want to come here whenever I was asked. Mm-hmm. Right. I Like I had different plans for my life, but let me tell you, like, if I would have if I would have disobeyed and, and not walked in in the promised land that God had for my life in this season, man, I I don't know where I would be. Right. And and when when we chose to seek the Lord's face and submit to to that, man, like we're this is home. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that I would never consider like that. I laughed at Tony when he yeah. said that, and that's I think that's where a lot of people are. Is like. Some people are just cool with that. They got their fire insurance, right? But other people, it just genuinely freaks them out that, that like, God would have them, you know, uh, reach people. Or, you know, and, and it's just sad that they don't see that. I think David was sharing last week that it's, like, it's for our good, you know? Like, everything that God has called us to, it's for our good. And so when we walk in what he's called us to, making disciples that make disciples man it feels good it's it's like fulfilling that's that's where we're going to find that satisfaction in life is walking in what god has called us to all right so so let's pray right now just for our body that we would be not content to be on the wrong side of jordan that we we would desire uh, to walk in the land of promises god's promises god's word so we just pray for that. And Tay, would you pray for this? God, I just love you. I thank you. I praise you. I thank you for your word and just for the promises that are in it, God, and for the truth. Um, God, I just pray, or I just thank you for um, Tony and Mason and just um, for their leadership um, and um, just the things that they've taught me over the years. God, I pray right now over 
um, our body. I pray that we aren't content just coming back to church after this stay at home order and just sitting through sermons and um, just listening to the teaching and preaching of your word. Mm. But I pray that we um, all are just, um, that you just set a fire in our souls to reach um, men and women and children and um, make disciples that make disciples and that we aren't content just living the American dream and um, coming to church and doing church things, but that um, we just allow you to um, change us and make us more like you um, and that we um, just desire to see um, souls saved. I love you and thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Tay, is there another point that just kind of jumped off out at you? glean from the message yeah um the seventh lesson um god is not pleased with my fleshly obedience um and partial obedience is still disobedience and delayed obedience is still disobedience Mm -hmm. um and so like i kind of have a word or a concept or a lesson for each year i just ask the lord to give me a vision um personally and 2020 is all about obedience Mm -hmm. and um the Lord's just been really showing me all sorts of different things about obedience. And it made me think of a quote by Brett Bartlett um, from the Theology Roundtable Mm -hmm. podcast. Um, And he said, obedience only happens when it's immediate, exact, and with the right heart attitude. Mm -hmm. And so um, sometimes when the Lord tells me to do something, you can do it like exactly. But if your heart isn't right, then you didn't obey. Right. Um, And so that's just been... A big lesson is like just asking the Lord to give me the right heart attitude no matter what he's asking me to do you know where he's asking me to do it um and then it just makes me think of Ruth um oh. and I've been going through um Ruth with the New Philly group um over Zoom and it's just been incredible and um Ruth says to Naomi like I'll go wherever you go like your people will be my people your God will be my God and then she was steadfastly minded in that and then she did it and so like verse 19 just stuck out to me in Ruth um, 1 yeah Ruth 1 19 is like they immediately moved and her feet moved and so like obedience happens not when you tell God okay I'm gonna obey whatever Mm -hmm. you tell me to do but like when you do it yeah Um, and so that's just been a really good lesson Um, yeah so just making sure that you obey not your flesh you know that that point I think is one of the most important ones. You know, it's the last one that everybody's usually ready for the message to be done. And I just get over, okay, number seven, we're almost done. Well, no, I think it's one of the most important ones because at the end of Deuteronomy one, you know, when God says, okay, you're not going to go in because of your lack of faith. They said, no, 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 we'll we'll do it. We'll do it. And God says, I'm not interested in that. And on the surface, it looks like delayed obedience, but it's not, it's fleshly obedience. They're like, because they didn't want the ulterior, uh, the, is that the word I'm looking for? The alternative, that's alternative. the word I'm looking for, ulterior. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, what? That makes no sense. <laughs> alternative, they're like, you know what? I don't want the wilderness and I don't want this, but I'd rather have this. And so on the surface, every time I've always read that in the past, I'm like, man, God's not pleased with delayed obedience. And that's true, but it's not. I mean, they did what God told them to do in the flesh. And he says, I'm not with you. And because of that, they suffered. And it's, I, I think that's such an important thing uh, for people to get. Um, it's, it is possible to do what God told you to do in the flesh and receive zero benefit uh, from a zero reward. So I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians 3 where um, when, when we all go to the judgment seat of Christ, he says he's going to try to what sort it is. Well, what kind of work was that? Well, it was God's work. Well, he's going to try to what sort it was. Was it done in faith? was it done in the flesh and you if you remember was it the sheep and the goats where jesus is talking about that in in the gospels the judgment the sheep and the goats and they said you know we've we've done this in your name and this in your name Mm -hmm. this in your name and and jesus says depart from me i never knew you just because you do it in my name just because you do what i told you to do and you do it in the flesh guys i'm not i'm not pleased by that and so the cross references romans you know eight eight they that are in the flesh cannot please mm-hmm. God. It's not possible. Yeah, but I'm doing godly things. I'm reading my Bible because I'm supposed to. I'm praying because I'm supposed to. Oh, because you're supposed to. <laughs> oh, that's a fleshly 
Yeah. That's will worship. It's God's not impressed. He's just not impressed by it. Well, just imagine if I served my wife out of duty mm. because I'm married to her. Like, hey, like, let's go out on a date because I have to. Mm-hmm. What's she gonna? What's she gonna do? I don't even want to go out on a date with you now. Yeah. You're a jerk. Like, <laughs> it's it's should be not a duty for me to do that. While, obviously, as a husband, that is kind of a duty. You you're, you should be dating your wife. It's a delight, man. I, like, there's right. nothing like getting to go take my wife out on a date. You know, and she's not gonna feel special, and it's not gonna matter to her. Like, she's not gonna want to go on that date if it's a duty. And so. The same goes, like, God's not interested in you doing something out of duty for him. He doesn't need you to do anything. But he, he he's, he like, it's a, whenever we delight in the Lord, and we, like, because it's all about that relationship, right? That personal, intimate relationship with him. It becomes a joy to, to walk in obedience because we understand, I think I alluded to this last week, we understand that he made us, and he only wants what's good for us. Right. So when we walk in, in like what he's called us to, we, we walk in obedience. We just have simple faith and trust that he like wants what's best for us and we do it. Man, like that's where the true joy and delight comes from. And I feel like, you know, a lot of a lot of people, they miss that. It doesn't it's not about that relationship, even though we, we talk about it all the time. It becomes a duty. Yeah. You know, we try to please our pastor. Or we, or it's maybe it's just like, hey, get off my back. I'm just gonna do it, kind right. of deal. Instead of it being like a joy for us to, you know, whatever that thing is to be obedient to, you know, we just kind of do it, and, and it's easy to get to that point, yeah. without a doubt. Um, but we need to get to the place where it's a delight. Just, man, it's it's just a joy to to be obedient to what God has called us to. Yeah. So it makes me think of the point. Um, from the message where it's like God wants us to go from obeying him because he wants us to, to obeying him because we love him. Right. Exactly. Just like with you and Deidre, like don't date her because you have to, but because you genuinely love her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's land the plane here. Um, and I, I'd like to just kind of close with this last point that really stuck out to me during the message, just as I was preaching it. Um, which, which is number six, God will allow you to experience needs so that he can provide for those needs. And, you know, he, he points out to them in, in the chapter, you know, your, your clothes didn't go bad. You know, I bore you, I, I carried you. Your, I mean, your feet didn't even swell. You know, he talks about all those things, um, especially in Deuteronomy chapter eight. But as I'm preaching, I was just thinking about how many times I've got to a point of true need and then God has allowed me to go through those need times so that he could provide for me. Um, and God has done that in my life. I know he's done it in both of your lives, but he's really done it in the life of this church mm-hmm. where he's just been providing. Like Now, in my opinion, there's times when like, he can provide a little bit more. <laughs> you know, like, can we get this done a little bit faster? But it, re- it makes us need to rely on him and not ourselves. And... Um, it was just a good reminder, just as I was preaching, I was convicted that oh, the reason there is need is so that he can provide for the need. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just don't ever want to be that entitled. That just drives me nuts, the, the sense of entitlement in today's society. Well, because somebody else has taken care of that. And for you, never experience need because it's already taken care of. But God doesn't do that. He puts you in a spot where you are desperately in need of something that he can come in and save the day. That's a pretty awesome God to have to serve. So there's, here's how I want to just want to get one example each. I'm going to start with Mason so you can think about it. <laughs> one example how God has brought you from a place of need to provide for it. Um, well, I guess when we moved here, we didn't have any jobs. We moved up here with just a dollar and a dream. It's <laughs> a hip hop reference. <laughs> no, uh, we just moved up here with nothing. And fortunately, when we were 22, we it wasn't like if if I were to do that now, it would take a lot more. Yeah. I mean, wow, 
that's I mean that like from a worldly perspective how foolish you know for me to move my my wife up here with no agenda as far as how we were going to make it mm -hmm. you know but we just knew that um the lord was going to provide but he we had a legitimate need right we didn't have any income we didn't have a place to stay and it was just neat to to watch like the things fall into place because we we were i mean on our way back to um it was funny tony was asking me you know hey how are you guys going to pay for the the moving van i was like oh my gosh i have no idea i didn't even consider that and like out of the goodness of this this man's heart right he wrote us a check for the the total amount of what we were going to need to move yeah it was just amazing like there was a need I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to do about it. And, and the Lord prov provided. And I mean, that's just one of infinite. Yeah. I mean, I could go on and on about how, you know, at the end of the month, there's more bills than, than money. And, and we have never been in need as a family. Yeah. I mean, praise the Lord. That's good. How about you? Um, Mine is not so physically tangible um but here a while back um i was going through some like anxious anxious times um of just feeling a lot of anxiety and um you know just those thoughts and um, not knowing anything about my future or you know what the lord had for, has for me um and so just letting those thoughts kind of take over um and that made me truly like okay god like i'm relying on you for every aspect of my life because it's easy to rely on him for different aspects but like things that are going on in your mind or your pride doesn't want you to allow him to you know pick you up and love you and like a father and you know um care for you and so um when those thoughts were coming on like in first Corinthians, casting down you know those imaginations and um so that's that was a big thing here a few months ago was just like i think the lord had me get to a point where i was like truly had to rely on him because i couldn't function without um him in those like anxious times um you know no sleep no like you know all those things and um, it was to a point where I, like, I was up in the middle of the night reading my Bible and praying and um, it was just the Lord just like, oh, I think he allowed me to go through those times and those times alone so that I can truly like <laughs> rely on him um, and that he can provide and um, not rely on myself because I tend to like to fix things by myself. Um, I'm a fixer. Yeah. And I'm a fixer for others and for myself and um, allowing the Lord to fix that and not not fix it on my own yeah um so real quick my example would be when god moved us down to texas um we had to sell a house uh, actually coming back from texas we had to sell a house and at both times we sold our house within less than 24 hours which is how does that happen it never happened but we needed God to provide. We needed to, because we had to move quick in both in both situations, um, which is a long story. But just seeing God provide, and the very first time we literally had two people fighting over our house. One came in the front door, one came in the back door, and they were like one upping each other. I'm like this is. This I'll is pay awesome. you. I'll pay you more for your house. Yeah, than they just like what is what is what is happening here? I think God's wanting us to move. You know, and then it was time to come back. We just threw a phone call. Somebody said, oh, man, we've always loved your house. We'd, we'd love to buy it. I, I think God wants us to move. He's providing these buyers. And um, just like you, you know, I've got a host of other things, you know, where God provided a need. Um, but that was the first one that popped in. And it was a, we have to rely on, we have to rely on God on this deal. Yeah. And he, and he did. So it's probably a good spot to stop. The guys, um, just, just know that you will go through times of the wilderness if you're a believer. You will go through it. And if 
maybe from the message or you maybe you couldn't catch the message, I would just encourage you to go back and listen to it. There are seven lessons you should learn in the wilderness. Um, and it's not necessarily what God is doing. It's what God is doing in you. The idea is that he's leading you to, through a time of transition so that you can be in a time of transformation. So it's a brand new you. Um, and so with that, we're just going to say goodbye and uh, love you all. Bye-bye.